Now we kind of change directions and get back into math. Um, we're going to talk about the formula mass. So formula mass is the mass of a formula. It's also called molecular mass, which would be the mass of a molecule. Okay, we talked about atomic mass with the elements, right? That was the mass of an atom. So this is the mass of a formula unit. Uh, molecular mass is the mass of a molecule. Um, a lot of times we'll use molecular mass for all of them, even the ionic compounds that don't technically have molecules, but we know what it means. So calculating this is, is how you might think it is. We're just going to add up the masses of all the atoms that are in the formula, which would be everything in a single molecule or in a formula unit of, a of an ionic compound. And so, um, you know, if you've got five oxygens, instead of, ox you know, adding oxygen five times, you take the number of atoms, five, and you multiply by the mass of oxygen. And then you do that for each element in the compound, you add them up. So let's calculate the formula mass of calcium nitrate. What do we need before we can calculate the formula mass? We need the formula. So, so this is, I'm sneaking in a little bit of review of nomenclature. What kind of a compound is this? It's ionic. So it's always the first element that we're going to be looking at. Um, and so calcium, we don't think of as a metal, but it is. It's over there on the left. Um, if it said acid, that, that would be a dead giveaway. Um, so calcium nitrate tells us it's um, ionic, so we need to write the ions. Okay? So calcium is 2 plus because it's in group 2A. Okay? Nitrate is NO3 minus because you memorize it. And then we're looking at how do I put these together so I can have a neutral compound and I need two of these guys to every one of those. So our formula is CaNO3, 2. And I want to put parentheses around my polyatomic ion when I have more than one of them. Okay. So on an exam, I would give you a formula and ask you to calculate the mass. And then I'd ask you what the formula was separately so I wouldn't combine them like this. But this isn't an exam. Um, so we're just going to look at the elements here. Um, so calcium, how many calcium atoms are there? Just one, right? So calcium is, just did this yesterday, oh yeah, 40.08 <coughs> atomic mass units. I'm going to use the um, atomic masses rounded to four sig figs, because then I don't have to look at the table all the time. And then the next element is nitrogen. How many nitrogen atoms are in the formula? Two, right? Because there's two of this group, each group has one. So there are two nitrogens times the mass of a nitrogen atom. And how many oxygens? Six. So six oxygens times the mass of an oxygen atom. You don't have to worry about order of operations or anything. You just type it in like this, and your calculator will understand what you mean. So this is telling me 164.1 atomic mass units. Anybody else get that number? Thanks. Um, what about sig figs in molar masses? Or, I'm sorry, formula masses? You, you could argue it two different ways. You could say, well, we're multiplying here, and so the result of that multiplication will have two 
uh, have four sig figs, and here six times 16 will have four, and sometimes that will um, bump you into fewer decimal places, and sometimes it won't. You can also think of it as just adding. I'm adding this twice, I'm adding this 16. If you think of it that way, the number of decimal places in these masses should be the number of decimal places over here. So using that concept, we put a zero there. That's a, that's a pretty sad zero. Because I'm thinking too hard about it. Really for molar masses, formula masses, any of the masses, just don't round them off. You're not gonna end up with lots and lots of extra sig figs like we do when we divide and multiply stuff. It'll maybe be one or two extras. And so just use all of them, okay? 164.10 AM <coughs> atomic mass units. Okay, molar mass. Formula mass was the mass of a formula. Molar mass is the mass of a mole of the stuff. A mole is Avogadro's number of pieces, right? So what's very cool about how the mole is defined is the mass in grams of one mole of molecules or formula units is numerically equal to its formula mass. We just calculated the formula mass of calcium nitrate as 164.1 atomic mass units. One mole of that compound would weigh 164.1 grams. So we use atomic mass units when we're talking about atoms or molecules, those individual incredibly small particles. When we're talking about moles of stuff, a mole is a quantity that's large enough to see. And so the units for those are grams. So what's the molar mass of ammonia? What's the formula for ammonia? NH3. So you kind of have to memorize that. But if you remember, there's um, a cation, <coughs> ammonium, that's NH3, sorry, NH4 plus. Ammonia is just lost its hydrogen. So I'm going to write this out with all the units, but you don't have to do that all the time. So we have one mole of nitrogen in one mole of the compound. And one mole of nitrogen weighs 14.01 grams per mole. And we have three moles of hydrogen. And each mole of hydrogen is 1.008 grams per mole. Seventeen point zero three four grams. So the moles cancel out. And if we're looking at significant figures, we should probably say that's the last last one. So you do not need to write out all those units. This is the minimum I would like to see you write out when you calculate molar masses. <clears throat> you can leave the units out. We're going to do a lot of these calculations. Um, and if we put units in them all the time, it gets extremely tedious. And they all come out the same. Um, so you can leave them out. But you really should write this down. I know you could just type it into your calculator without writing anything down. But go ahead and write it down. Any questions? So we can take that molar mass and combine it with Avogadro's number and figure out how many molecules are in a given mass of a compound. <coughs> And so our path here is going to be grams of compound to moles of compound to molecules of compound. Converting between moles and molecules, we already learned about, that's Avogadro's number. 
molecules. The chemist dozen, molecules are like eggs. A dozen, um, a dozen is 12 eggs. The mole is like dozen. Um, from grams to moles, that's the molar mass that we just learned about. So find the number of ibuprofen molecules in a tablet containing 200 milligrams of ibuprofen. And the, the formula is C13H1802. So this is a dimensional analysis pro problem. So we need to look at what's given. Well, there's only one number in there, right? 200 milligrams. And what do they want us to find? Number of molecules. So that's what we're trying to do. And it's just all the units. So 200 milligrams, and then I'm trying to get to molecules. So I need some units in the middle. Moles. Moles are often in the middle in chemistry problems. There was a show called Malcolm in the Middle. Here we've got moles in the middle. So the moles are going to be in the middle. So here we have moles. And we can convert between moles and molecules using Avogadro's number. Can we relate moles to milligrams? No. We need grams, right? But we can do milligrams to grams. So there's our path. Two hundred milligrams times in a line, times in a line, times in a line. And then we write the units in milligrams to grams to moles. Nice short unit that has an abbreviation, and then there's molecules, and it doesn't have an abbreviation, you just have to write the whole stupid thing. Previous unit is milligram, so we're going to divide so those cancel out. This is grams, and down here is moles. You figure out the path, and then you just follow the path. And there's so much less thinking than trying to memorize, you know, how do I convert something from grams to molecules? So we need some numbers here. Um, this first one, we have a metric unit gram, and one has a prefix and one doesn't. So we need to know what milli stands for, that lowercase m, and we're supposed to have memorized that as 10 to the negative 3. So milli stands for 10 to the negative 3, so I'm going to write 10 to the negative 3 up here because 1 gram is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 3 grams. You see what I did there? I, I wrote it in the wrong place. Nope. I just, you know, please stop me when I do that because there we go. I don't know what I was pointing at. Anyway, um, grams to moles. Well, we do need that one, but that one's over here, moles to molecules. Okay, so since that has been brought up, which, which unit gets Avogadro's number, molecules or moles? Molecules. Because mole is like a dozen, right? A dozen is 12 things. Not a thing is 12 dozen. So it's one mole, and then we've got to stick this whole stupid long number in with the stupid long word. Just squeeze it in as best you can. So the grams per mole thing. 
we're looking for the mass really of one mole of this compound. So that's what we just learned how to do. Here we have the chemical formula. So this number we have to do a separate calculation for. So we've got 13 carbons and we multiply by the mass of one mole of carbon and we've got 18 hydrogens multiplied by the mass of a mole of hydrogen and we have two oxygens times the mass of a mole of oxygen. Anybody else get that number? So, you know, we should probably say that has two decimal places, um, but it's just got one extra digit. And if your problems are set up correctly, your molar mass is not the thing that's limiting the number of sig figs in your answer. It's going to be the original mass. Um, here, our, our original number has four sig figs, and Avogadro's number has four sig figs, and this has more, <coughs> so it's not going to change anything. And yesterday, I got all excited when I got this number, and I thought I was done with the slide. Yeah, not done yet. Um, so now we need to actually calculate the molecules. Are we expecting a big number or a small number? A big number. Yeah. Beyond ginormous. And we need to look all the way over the right side of the calculator display to see that it's times 10 to the 20th. So this would be 5.839 times 10 to the 20th molecules. One ibuprofen tablet has that many ibuprofen molecules in it along with a bunch of other stuff, right? Any questions? <laughs>